tail of the tape. You can see the champion, 32 years of age. Height advantage goes to Nemet Abrashitov, world title time. And when you have a fight of this magnitude, you need a referee of this magnitude from Bali Claire to Bahrain. The Vanilla Gorilla, Aaron Wallace, gets us started. Phil, this is a title fight. This is a five-round fight. Roman Bogatov wants it to go long. Nemat, Eagle, Abdrashitov wants to end it quickly. As we have said many times in the build-up, it is endurance versus explosivity. Bogatov needs to be careful when he's pawing out the jab. Those fingers are outstretched. Changing levels. Catches Abdrashitov in the middle. Oh, that's huge for Nemet Abrashitov. That was shut down hard. They try and work into a guillotine, and at this stage of the fight, when both fighters are dry, this could be huge. He's putting everything into this. There's a huge squeeze there. If Bogatov doesn't tap, he's in danger of going out. Aaron Wallace taking a long, hard look at this. I am seeing some, I'm seeing some pressure. I'm seeing a lot of pressure, Phil. There's a lot of pressure on that neck. He may be out. We can't quite see at this stage as Bogatov. I think he's out, Phil. I think he's out, Phil. I think he might be out. He no, he's I still in it. How is he still in this? What a beast. That is ridiculous. Um, Woo! Pops right back up and uncorks a knee. Is Nema Abrashito perhaps guilty of burning out the arms because he put everything into that? Great work from Aaron Wallace. It was at a very difficult angle because both arms of Bogatov were in tight. Very slick strategy by Roman Bogatov. What a Conserved start. his energy, didn't move at all. Knew he wasn't going to go out. Abdashidov does have two wins by guillotine on his ledger. Very dangerous in that regard. Loves a choke. Five of his seven submission wins coming by way of choke. Right. You wonder, what does this do to the game plan of Roman Bogatov? He's been in deep in the guillotine. Does he become a little bit more gun shy with regards to the takedown, or does he just need to tighten it up a little bit? So far, I think he's very. he can be very confident with what he's shown. He got stuck in a pretty deep submission, was absolutely, I think, fine with it. Just bided his time, waited, conserved his energy, and then tried to explode when it was over. Another telling factor could be the fact that Nemet Abdashitov has never gone to a fourth or fifth championship round in his career. Doubling up on the jab, jab hook combination. Not far away with a nice shovel uppercut was Roman Bogatov. Roman, I think, throwing those shots more to get in close than for full effect. And there you saw it. Does not have the hands together quite yet. They may be together now. We don't have a perfect view. He's creeping just down. I think he's more so trying to lace up a leg than he is trying to connect the hands. Head. Maybe a leg shelf coming. There it is. Head on the outside. Abrashitov doing the right thing by trying to push the head down, but if the legs are above the point of the hips, it's very, very difficult for him to get any kind of physical momentum. Hands connected by Bogatov. Got the back and a hook. He's got one hook in. That's a cheeky little fence grab by Nemet Abrashitov. Both hooks are now in. Makes way to the body triangle. Two, hook, two hooks, Brave Nation. This is a dangerous position. Maybe switching to a figure four in the body, to the body triangle. If he needs, if he's going to switch to that figure four, he needs to do it on the other side, as Nemet Abdrashidov has done the right thing by rolling to the side, it would be locked on to alleviate some of the pressure. Abdrashidov wisely was trying to get to that fence to stop the feet from connecting, was unable to. Bogatov trying to free a hand now, and is just gonna pepper. Abdrashidov actually looked back and almost gave him the neck there. Dangerous game to play with Roman Bogatov, who himself has five wins by way of submission. Bogatov may tra try and transition to top mount. But right now, knowing that Bogatov has the type of gas tank he has, he may be happy just to stay in this position and wear on Nemet Abrashitov. You can see he's trying to sneak that arm underneath the chin, Kerik. That body triangle, Brave Nation, is wearing. Nemet it's gonna be a scramble, gonna be a scramble who comes out of this on top. Oh, Nemet Abrashitov on top now. Eagle lands on top. 
big confidence boost for him, had his back taken for an extended period, was able to survive that without being in much danger, actually threw some shots back over his shoulder, ends up on top, but it's now incumbent on him to do something with it. Needs to be wary of giving, beautiful up kick from Bogotov, but he's eating some big hammer fist, and that is the first round in the books. Kieran, where do you even begin action. to start beating? Let's let this replay tell the story for us, courtesy of Green Hill, our apparel sponsor. There was a shot, leg shot, completely shut down. Guillotine was locked in pretty tight. We're now moving to later in the round. Probably Bogatov at his best in this fight. Got the takedown, shelf the leg, took the back, got the figure four in the body, not able to cause much damage. Ironically, ended up on bottom, and that is probably the biggest shot. We go second of a potential five. As this is a championship fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. Interesting, Nima threw oh! a jab to the body and then I was going to say something high is going to follow. That was a clean head kick and <laughs> Roman Bogatov acting like a Terminator out here, just eating shots. Bogatov might have wanted to set that double up a little bit more. And ladies and gentlemen, let it be known that the number one contender, the man who will fight the winner of this bout, Omar Solomonov, is in the building. Having just won the main event at Brave Combat Federation 71 four days ago. Nemet, Nemet had luck, Phil, with that jab to the yeah. body. I think he's going to try it again. And the thing is, if you go to, go to the body with the jab, what does that open up? Opens up the upstairs. Followed up with a left high kick the first time. And expect to see that straight right to the head following up the second time. Bogatov, you can just feel he's like a coiled spring. The champion always has something aggressive in the locker. It's almost like he's trying to counter, just waiting. Interesting to see the eagle shift. Doesn't do that a lot. Fights out of an orthodox stance. We saw him very briefly, southpaw. Bogatov needs to be careful. You see when he's coming forward like that, switching stances, he ends up very, very square. He needs to be careful when he's doing that. Big shot over the top. Missed, but barely. Do you see what I mean when he steps forward like that, when he does that switch from orthodox to southpaw? Oh, it's a big one too. Was that hook, sorry, hook straight combination from Nemet Abrashitov. Nemat seems to be coming into his own in this round too, yeah. Phil. The inevitable takedown from Roman Bogatov, taking the back again. More of a schoolyard headlock. The submission from this position would be a bulldog choke, but it is very, very rare in professional mixed martial arts. Just as I say that, Bogatov transitions, coming more side on than back facing. Shelved one leg. He's got one ankle, the far ankle controlled. He may try and pick it with two hands and then complete the takedown. Abushinov thought about elbows from that position. There's one. See, this is the thing in this position, and it's something that Chiel Sonnen has talked about at nauseum. When you commit to a takedown, like the legs of a single or a double that you're not quite getting, you have to commit both hands, and in doing so, expose the head. You can defend against that at, typically with good head position. That head is actually just a little out of position, but less than an inch. There's the back take Whoa. again from Bogatov. Quick as can be. Has a lot more time with which to work. Could switch the head on triangle in this position. Slight impediment of the cage, but Bogatov has an incredible squeeze. You can see he's trying to isolate that arm. Gave up on that. Looking for greener pastures now, might take an arm, a leg. And the game plan of Bogotov may be to take Nemet Abrashitov into the deep water, somewhere he's never been before. Runs four and five and see if his gas tank holds up, because we know that Bogotov's will. Looking for a Dars here. 
Last Let it minute. go, looking for a cradle now. Last minute of the second round. Bogotov in a very strong position. Has the presence of mind and cage calm to look over at his corner, take in the instruction. Not typically a lot you can do from a cradle Could in this sport, but it can yeah. tire your opponent out. He would need to release it and hit the likes of an Armin guillotine. But Nema Abrashito, much like he did in the first round, is finishing on top, but side on guillotine doesn't have the guillotine guard in. Both these men wrestling with, with a bit of a headlock each. Nemat's going to look for something big in this, the final 20 seconds Abdesh of round two. Abdeshitov has the cradle position. Kirk, what I want to ask you is, so Nemat Abdeshitov has finished both rounds on top, but aesthetically, yes, it looks good, but is it enough at this stage of a fight to be awarded a round? Phil, I found the first round razor sharp. I called it. Back to the action at hand. Roman Bogatov, the champion, doing everything he can to maintain that championship status against Nemet Abrashitov, the challenger, the man who's currently riding a six fight win streak. The Eagle is stalking. That's a beautiful kick. kick. He almost kicked Roman Bogatov into position for the hook, but Bogatov with a fantastic jab of his own. Bogatov needs to be careful of pawing out when he's trying to land that knee. Oh, huge one too! Huge shot, he's wobbled. And right now, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go chasing. Step off, you've wobbled Nemat, him. Let at him this up. point, Nemat wants to stand back and call his opponent up. He's got, he's got several seconds to try and ring that bell hard and it will have cleared. The adrenaline pump is high. He's trying to look for the head arm triangle. He needs to jump across the body. Bogatov doing just enough to create space for himself. If Abrashitov can skip through to side control, this is a very, very dangerous position. He's working his way through. Oh, there it is. This is tight, it's Kirik. It's tight. How long can champion Roman Bogatov Hang on, palm to palm grip for Nemet Abrashitov. Inside a closed guard, this is a much, we got it inside a half guard, it is a much oh, harder submission to finish. Nemet gave up on it, was not able to maintain side control. And look already at the swelling of the left eye of Roman Bogatov. Perhaps a little bit of a, a rush of blood to the head there and chasing Roman Bogatov on. Nemat Abdrashitov doing a good job of keeping his opponent smushed tight near the fence, but not so pushed up against it that Roman is allowed to, or is able to, rise up to standing. Excellent mixed martial arts wrestling in front of us here. One of the lesser known technical terms in mixed martial arts there, smushed against the cage. Smushed near the cage. <laughs> Beautiful work, Kerry. Nemat transitions beautifully in the mount. Could try and Triangle, triangle coming. Got to control that head or it's not going to work. Also needs to get that left leg flush across the shoulders. Doesn't quite have the angle for it. He slipped out. Bogatov will not be denied. Two and a half minutes left in the third point. Midway point of the round and indeed the fight. Roman Bogatov needs to go to work right now if he wants to claim back this round. That knockdown was absolutely huge for Nemet Abrashitov. Bogatov in physical ascendance. You wonder. Not strategic. You wonder if Bogatov's going to try and jump on a guillotine here. Not close yet. But this is good for Nemet Abrashitov. Just needs to keep the striking nice and clean, nice and refined. Very smart of Roman to attack the body. Part of his strategy, I believe, is those deep water rounds, the championship rounds. Hit the body, hit Ooh. the body, hit the body. Rounds four and five are that much longer. Watch out for a knee here from either man. Abdashitov could just pull back, plumb clinch and pop a knee right up the center. Needs to get back away from the cage, doesn't have Abdashitov. Good shot over the top again. Heavy, heavy sprawl from Abdashitov forces Bogatov to release the grip of the single. 
Kamishidov needs to keep turning the corner. Numan back at it, attacking that body. Oh, that's a good knee to the midsection. Wide shot, readily slipped. And on that single, doesn't turn the corner on it, but puts Abrashitov on his backside. Abrashitov's got that body lock. Is an option to reverse here. Again, he really needs to do something super proactive at this stage. You think about it, he's been knocked down. He was in a deep, deep head arm triangle choke. Bogatov moving into half guard. That arm is trapped. He's quickly moving to the side where he's out of severe danger of anything at least getting sweeped. Bogatov standing on top. As you said though, Phil, he needs to do something big to pull this round back. He's chipping away. He needs an explosion. Nice elbow through from Bogatov there. <laughs> that, Phil, that elbow opened the cut. Cut right away. That is a big cut that happened right in front of our eyes, Phil. Yeah, I would score that round 10-9 for Nema Abrashitov, but yes, it may be a 10-9 in favor of the challenger, but again, a little bit of a moral victory for Roman Bogatov to open up that cut. That seems to be right above the eye, Kerrick. The position. Well, if you're Roman Bogatov, that's going to give you a little bit of an extra kick, a little bit more pep in your step now that you've seen that you've hurt really? the challenger. Nemat Abdrashitov, welcome to deep waters for the very first time. And if you're Roman Bogatov, is, th is the cut something that you're going to start really zeroing in on and using that as almost like a little bit of a magnet, your fists, your knees, and your shins? trying to find that target every time. Right now, Philly has continued to try and attack the body in an attempt to sap his opponent of, of strength. Abrashito is getting through with big shots. Nice leaping hook from the champion. Champion growing into the fight. Deep, uncharted waters for Nenet the Eagle Abrashitov. And eagles are used to flying. They're not used to having to swim in deep waters. Good sprawl, but oh, Bogatov with a big knee. I thought momentarily, Phil, that it was Bogatov who was open. Oh, that cut is starting to impede the vision. You can see him wiping at it. The blood may be red, but that's acting like a red rag to a bull. That is the champion room on Bogatov. Nimut fighting back valiantly. And you can see him continually wiping out that eye. It is undeniably an impediment to his vision. Another nice short elbow from Bogatov. And he eats a shot too, but... Oh, one, two from Bogatov. Bogatov standing on the inside. I think Philly's in a great deal of danger standing and trading like that. Maybe knows something I don't. But now he's in danger of having his back taken by Neme Abrashitov. He's pulling in on that single. Going to shortly pull that arm out. Try and pop back up to standing. Going to be catching his breath momentarily. Vice like grip. Dog and a bone with that single leg. Yep. And they turn into Abrashitov. Turning in, but that, that single may be pulling his opponent into a top mount. Abrashitov needs to be where sorry, Bogatov needs to be wary of having his head in that position. Abrashitov underhook on the far side, trying to flatten his opponent out. Sprawl that leg back. And then proceed to side control mount or conceivably stay in top half guard and start to rain some shots down. Midway point of the fourth round and incredibly, incredibly close fight. Bogotov flat back, flat backing a little bit. That's not a great sign. Deagle now in full top side control, Brave Nation. May try and knee slide in the mount. Good 
doesn't want to put himself inadvertently into a crucifix position. Nice work to switch the scarf when he felt Bogotov trying to dig in. Roman has the beginnings of a frame on that head. He's got an arm scissored. He's likely going to try and throw some elbows, but with the head facing that way, they are not available. Nice work by Abdashitov. Good positional dominance. I'd like to see him be a little bit more active with some strikes. Maybe trying to gift wrap. Abdrasitov returning to a more conventional wrestling ride than a typical Jiu Jitsu MMA position. Watch the right knee of Abrashitov. As soon as he stretches that out to get rid of the grapevine, he may look to slide that through for knee on belly and then the mount. Abrashitov seems to be happy just to take this position. Less than a minute remaining in this round, Brave Nation. That cut is really leaking. Doctor has examined it. Both the depth and the position of the cut are not dangerous in terms of a fighter's long-term health. It's all flat back in a little bit here. Needs to turn to a hip. Needs to get his right hip pinned on the mat. Scoot his backside out, shrimp back in. Turning away is a risky, risky position. The risk giving up the back. Strong, strong finish in the fourth round for Nenet Abrashitov. Let's see if he can free up an elbow. Try the elbow. The momentum almost carried him through to give it up his back and Beautiful example right there, Brave Nation, on the ground in this sport. Can you hold someone? Yes, but when you rear back to try and land an efficient strike, you can lose position, you can lose everything. We're, thanks to Green Hill, we're now getting a look at some of the great action we saw in the fourth round, in the first deep waters round, the first championship round of this, the main event of Brave Combat Federation 72. But again, that is an entirely unofficial scorecard. That said, Phil, these corners are only have their own opinion. I believe right now that both corners have told both fighters, you have to win this round. If you lose this round, you could lose this fight. I think that's how they're going to fight. They're, they're not going to go crazy. They're not going to get knocked out, but they're going to fight their hearts out to win this, the final round in the final fight of Brave Combat Federation 72 here in Combat Kingdom. Nice little bit of dirty boxing there from Roman Bogatov, but Nema Abrashitov chewing up that lead leg. I want to see if Bogatov's going for the takedowns. I want to see him set them up a little bit more. That's a big knee to the head, and that's opened up a cut. That big knee has opened up a massive cut. Turnaround is fair play. Both of these fighters bloody and bloody and unbowed. I was going to say bloodied and beaten, but that would not be the case. Neither of these men are beaten yet. Absolute warrior hearts shown by both men. This fight, Brave Nation, is a testament to human will. You take the average person, even the average athlete, and you stand them in these television lights for five rounds, and they're going to be tired. You have them fight like this for now, approaching 25 minutes. It is a testament to human endurance. Nemet Abrashito for the first time going into championship rounds, and he has coped brilliantly. Roman settling back on his heels. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, there he goes. Back on his toes, moving forward. These are huge knees. Bogatov running on pure heart right now. Again, it speaks to just how good his wrestling is that he can throw these takedowns, slightly telegraphed, slightly naked, no setup, and still catch some of them. It's just relentlessness. It speaks to his indomitable spirit, his unbreakable will. Part of his methodology, Phil, methodology, ordinarily a fighter will try and get in deep on the hips. He gets a, a little part of a hip, he gets a little bit of the leg, and he just moves wow. it forward, moves it forward, and that's what you see. If 
Bogatov can solidify the possession here and land some heavy, heavy shots. But needs to be wary. Abrashitov trying to get on that figure four grip. Doesn't get the grip. He may get the elbow. Bogatov could take the back here if he spins quick enough. But his head is on the inside. That's a dangerous position. Would be more advantageous to be on the outside if he were to take the back. Nemat trying to take what's available to him in terms of punches. And again, it's he's not looking. He's looking for the a shot. Thinking about the overhook. And it's not that. It's not a complete position for either man right now. The greater vulnerability being struck, being striked is by Bogatov, although Bogatov has the higher upside here. He's sacrificing his body a little bit for the greater good in this fight. Got one leg shelf, got that far ankle, he's going to go for the far knee, try and drive his opponent to his back, posture back, and land some significant shots. Abashitov has his back against the cage right now, he may try and wall walk up. Oh, there's the back tick from Bogatov. But in doing so, sacrifice the position a little bit. Let's name it Abrashitov up. One minute or so left in what is an incredible main event bout here at Brave Combat Federation 72, live from Combat Kingdom Bahrain. Again, Bogatov in. He finds himself in these positions that aren't quite dominant, aren't quite vulnerable. Kind of like the nether realm of takedowns. Well put, Phil. Great use of the wizard by Abrashitov. But as always with Roman, nothing is quite as it seems. You think you've stopped him, you haven't. Thirty seconds to go. Who wants it more? Who? Something big right here, Brave Nation, could take the entire round and conceivably the entire fight. The fighters' corners are excoriating them to attack and attack and attack. Heavy, heavy hips from Neme Abrashitov. He's landing the big shots, but Bogatov. The corners know. The judges want to see something big. And wow. that is that five rounds of action in the Brave Combat Federation cage. The second time Roman Bogatov has gone the distance in championship bouts, both men leaving absolutely everything inside the cage. And Kerrick, I would not want to be one of our judges right now. The judges are gonna, are gonna earn their keep for sure. Uh, what an incredible main event we had right here at Brave CF 72. After five hard fought rounds, we go to the judges scorecard. Your first judge scores about 50-45. Your next judge scores about 49-46. And your next judge scores about 48-47 for unanimous decision victory. And now, Brave Combat Federation featherweight champion of the world, from Kyrgyzstan, Nemat Andra Shito! Tale of the tape, you can see Nemet Abrashitov, the elder fighter, has more international experience. The vanilla gorilla, Aaron Wallace from Ballyclare to Bahrain is your man in the middle. Kirik, we are all set to go in what is an intriguing feather we about here at Brave CF 63. Phil, we got a South American Panther versus a Central Asian Eagle. It's like National Geographic. This is awesome. Both men just taking their time, downloading a little bit of data. That's a big inside leg kick from Nemet Abrashitov. Very well timed, too. But do you really want to get into exchanging kick for kick with Somebody who is so good at that Brazilian style of Muay Thai. Marcos Vinicius, very light on the feet. He's the more active fighter with regards to his movement. Almost trying to draw Nemet Abrashitov in. It's almost as if he's got a counter strike landed, or a counter strike loaded, so to speak. 
Brave Nation, what's going on here is each fighter is trying to download information on their opponent. What's the reaction time? What are they likely to respond with? Mm -hmm. So you see the two fighters fainting, playing with a distance between each other, throwing shots, pulling them. Each time, trying to get some information. We're starting to get some already. The Eagle is throwing oh, big shots. Oh, big uppercut to hook combination there, Carrick. But again, Vinicius is trying to take out that lead leg of Abrashitov. You see, mm, Marcos, we kind of in danger of overreaching a little bit there, leaving himself open to the counter. You can see he's trying to land that shot over the top, but in doing so, he's exposing himself to that uppercut hook combination from them at Abrashitov. Abdrashitov is setting down so hard on these shots that he may be leaving himself open to getting hit. It, he's playing a little bit of a dangerous game, Yeah, Phil. for sure. And you see when he when he plants down spinning backfist attempt into the takedown. And this is where Nemet Abrashitov does some of his best work. So dominant on the ground. And it's not somewhere you want to find yourself with a guy who has seven wins by way of submission. Two arm bars, three rear naked chokes, and two guillotines. So if he gets anywhere near a limb or a neck, more often than not, he takes it home with him. That's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu on bottom, though. And as I said, a man who's got great endurance. He can endure submission attempts. He can endure being taken down like this, and he can endure big shots. Nemet Abrashitov just trying to solidify position right now. He doesn't want to let Marcos Vinicius Costa up, but Costa's doing a good job. He's planting the hand. He's trying to wall walk, and he has a hold of Nemet Abrashitov's neck at the moment. Be interesting to see if he's trying to set up that guillotine. If he jumps guard on this... Elbows a little high for any submission danger, but should it get a little lower? Beautiful back position from Nemet Abdushitov. He's keeping that pretty much poker straight, making it so much more difficult for Marcos Vinicius Costa the to get any purchase. The hands are clasped, Phil. The elbow's too high for any significant result from that guillotine, but the hands are clasped. Might he try and pull guard on this? We can't quite tell if it's arm in. Abrashitov again doing a great job. He pulls guard. Yep. There it is. Oh, can't quite tell how tight that is. He's trying to fight the hand. Abrashitov doesn't look like he's in too much danger just yet. He's remaining calm. The guard is open of Marcos Vinicius Costa. Abrashitov has space here. With the elbow position there with a the forearm against the jaw, there's no, no submission danger yet. It looks as if, if anything, the cage is working in favor of Nemet Abrashitov here. He's able to stay nice and compact and compress Costa against the cage here. But the question you have to ask is, if Marcos Vinicius Costa continues to hold on to this, how likely is he to burn out his arms? If he doesn't right get now he's that, putting a lot into it, if Carrick. he doesn't get that right elbow a little bit lower, yeah, he's going to burn those arms out to very little effect. Brave Nation, in order to make this arm and guillotine work, yep. you ideally want to get that right ne the right elbow down towards the mat. Abrashitov using that S grip to to hook the choking hand of Costa, and it seems to be giving himself just enough space. He's planting the head down, he's tripoding, trying to alleviate some of that pressure, trying to dig his own shoulder in to create a little bit of pressure on Costa. He's got the ability, of course, with an open guard to tripod his hips even higher if he has to. I do not believe he has to yet. I don't think he's feeling a lot of pressure. And with 30 seconds left, Abrashitov might be happy to ride the round out in the hope that Marcos Vinicius Costa burns his arms out going into the second round. Howsomever, this is one round down. This is good. This appears potentially to the judges to be a, a very close submission attempt. Could very well give him the round. Showing a lot of mental wherewithal there, looking to his corner, asking for some advice on how to adjust the submission to finalize it. Oh, and he's out and lands a big shot. Little shot and after the buzzer there. That was not what he needed to do. Very. Vinicius Costa, who was in the more dominant position. Yes, he was off his back. So it really is a question of who do you give who do you give the, 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 the greater kudos to in that particular kind of situation? It does. There's a there's a degree of ambiguity in the unified rules around this one. You judge the striking, you judge the submission. Going into the second round, the Vanilla Gorilla calls the fires on. Second round, locked and loaded.
The Eagle, Phil, may want to back off on the takedowns now and just try and rely on those big shots. And again, you wonder what Marcos Vinicius Costa has left in the arms after maybe a, a half of a round with that grip. Nice shot to the body from Abrashitov. You say maybe within his interest to keep the fight standing. Big shot over the top, and again, and an uppercut. He's unloading right now. He is, and with good reason. Forces the takedown, the panic shot from Marcos Vinicius. Abrashitov senses something. And again, I think Marcos Vinicius Costa may have burnt out the arms a little bit because his shots are coming a little bit more labored. He's train tracking a little bit. There are spaces here for Abrashitov to exploit. Phil, I talked about the Eagles' confidence. If anything, I'm seeing a little bit too much confidence in there. You are a hard man to please, Kerry Dines. You can see Abrashitov, he has that rear hand loaded. Perhaps an uppercut or a straight as Marcos Vinicius Costa is going to come forward. The Eagles, the Eagles lining up a massive shot here. He's likely a straight right, probably going to be followed up with a left hook. That uppercut hook combination has worked beautifully for him a couple of times. And right now he's just trying to lull Pantera into where he wants him. Pantera's definitely missing just a little bit of a half a yard there. He's looking a little bit tired, Kirik. He is, and there are a few things that make you as tired as getting kicked in the calf that hard. Consequently holding on to a guillotine for two minutes, 30 of a round will do it, but fires off a nice shot to the body. There's that jab to straight combination from Abrashitov, and I like that he's not rushing his work right now. He's taking his time, he's trying to find those pockets of space to get those strikes in. Intelligent fight IQ being exhibited here by Abrashitov. And he is very much leading the dance. He's the one controlling the ebb and flow of the fight in the second round, Kirk. Eagles controlling distance very, very well. He's dealing with opponent's attacks simply by moving back or mm -hmm. circling slightly out of the way. Doesn't even feel the need to use his hands to catch or parry. Oh, he caught him there. And again, over the top. That, that jab that you saw there, Brave Nation, that's what timing can do. It doesn't have to be the biggest shot in the world. It has to be the best time. You catch your opponent moving in, and even a jab can cause action like you oh, saw right there. Hook to uppercut from Abrashitov. He is throwing with bad intentions. That's it. Oh, we that's dropped him. He's it's done. over. That what a fight finish. is over. Mehmet Abrashitov, the eagle. Time little shots. There are huge shots in every once in a while, you get a well-timed monster shot oh. like that. That is a beautiful shot. Uppercut to hook to hook. Aaron Wallace with a perfect stoppage. But what a shot from Abrashitov, the seventh KO of his career. All right, Brave Nation, another dramatic ending. And this one comes at 2 minutes and 50 seconds of the second round. Your winner, by knockout, Neman Eagle Abdrashito. Your referee is the bandit, Dickie Larkin. Big thanks to our sponsor, U1 Championship. Again, big thanks to U1 Championship. Tip, you can see Hasanov, the shorter fighter, the older fighter. But being the shorter fighter may work in his advantage here to try and get in underneath for that takedown. Or try and land that big right hand over the top, which Abrashitov has been vulnerable to in the past. He has a tendency to train track his lead hand, that jab, keep it low. Eagle's already landed one jab and one hook. If you meant the pun of Eagle has landed, that was spectacular, Kirk. Oh, big shot over the top. And on the single leg as Hasanov. Oh, beautiful drop down, but Abrashitov in on the neck. Elbow a little too high still, no danger on the trachea yet. It's potential turn into a slow choke, but it would take five minutes. Both these fighters must be said as the early stages, but... And there you go, Phil. These fighters use rather than hand fighting to get out, they tend to use positional. 
escapes, which are very, very smart. Gets you out of the hold, and it potentially puts you in a, at a positional advantage where you can land punishment of your own. That just shows the depth of the grappling culture within these Central Asian, Asian regions. I think that's exactly what it is, Phil. They've got a deep understanding of the positional game. Get yourself in trouble. Don't just hand fight and escape that problem. Get one step ahead. Mixed martial arts. You feel that chest set of checkers. You feel that Hasanov just has that big right hand over the top, primed and ready to go off the jab of Abrashitov. And again on the single, needs to run the pipe on that. Could go high crotch. Abandons it in favor of trying to get a looping shot over the top. Oh, nice knee to the mid-season from Abrashitov. Brave Nation, sometimes knees like you just saw right there, you can't quite appreciate how nasty you are unless you're sitting a few meters away from them and you can hear the noise. Oh, they are pinpoint. Battle for the underhooks. Double underhooks established here by Husanov, but he's, or Hasanov. He's not quite deep enough yet to connect his hands. Oh, right. oh, huge kick, but Hasanov eats it. Nemet wants to stay at distance. He doesn't want to wrestle his man. Wants to stay at distance, try and pot shot him from the outside. Got to keep a little bit more, a little more distance between his back and the cage. That's just where he needs to be. Oh, beautiful level change, then back up into the shot. Beautiful oh, shot right behind the ear. There is a thing called the button. One of those buttons is right behind the ear, and it just oh. got hit. It's over. It is. Beautiful stoppage by our referee, Deki Larkin. And then Abrashitov with the sixth. TKO win of his career, as you say, right on the button there. And here's where the flash happens, just there with that shot. Momentarily goes limp. Good call by him. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave Combat Federation 59 cage. This round comes to an end at 2 minutes and 46 seconds of round number one. The TKO two to strikes victory for Nimat Eagle Abrashito! Gold sponsor for this event. That's huge thanks to Khalid Abdul Rahim Group, our gold sponsor. And there we have a look at the tail of the tape. 23 years of age, the young Russian against 29 years from the Kyrgyzstan fighter, Nimat Abdrashitov. You forget just how young Anzor is because he's so comfortable and so loose in there. It must be stated that Nemat has had difficulty in the past with southpaws, and Anzor does have a tendency to switch effortlessly. He did that on cue there, Phil, for you. <laughs> switch stances must have been here in the commentary why to make you look particularly good this evening. Nice switch of stances there, and we have Abdushritov in the red corner, Abdul Hozayev in the blue. The thing about switching so much is it almost doubles up on your opportunities for different entries into the takedowns or to keep your opponent guessing with strikes coming from different angles. I've got to say, looking at the frame there of Nema Abdrashitov, he's very heavy on top. Those big shoulders, those pectorals, those big biceps there compared to a, a, a much slighter Anzor Abdul Khozaev. But don't get mistaken, ladies and gentlemen, Anzor Abdul Khazayev <laughs> is incredibly strong, freakishly strong. Very calm and composed there. Kirik, we've had one minute so far of these two feeling each other out. What do you think they're seeing? What, the, what are they learning about each other right now? This is the critical moment for elite fighters like this when they are downloading huge amounts of information from each other on their opponent's reaction time, on how fast their opponent is, because you don't know what somebody's got no matter how much tape you watch until you actually fight them. Look at the way he covered distance there. Just snaps that straight right down the pipe and it's, it's almost as if he's beating you into a false sense of security by being so calm and then bursting forward covered the distance beautifully. That right hand that he had such success with against Rolando D, causing problems for Nema. And I like the subtlety of just the little level changes. He brings the jab hand down as if he's going to feign for the takedown and then springs forward. And again, you, you highlighted it, Phil, on the walkouts. A very different style to the traditional fighters you would see coming out of the areas like Chechnya or Dagestan. Mm -hmm. He has the striking as well and at, at such a young age. 
Whoa, what an exciting talent. Has the wrestling, should he choose to use it if he wants to take you down, but he almost uses it in reverse, not unlike a Chuck Liddell, almost like a reverse wrestling to keep the fight standing where he wants it. Check out Abdrashitov's feints. They're very, very subtle, they're, but they're, they're giving him a ton of information. Every little wiggle of his knee, wiggle of the hip, drop of the shoulder, elicits a reaction from his opponent, and he's learning from that. When he throws a shot, does his opponent back up? Does he try to counter? Does he try to block? Once he gets that information down, which will happen sometime in the next 60 seconds, he's going to start to let the hands go. Those two very heavy leg kicks, and then that opened up the opportunity for the right down the pipe. Very smart. What I particularly like about that was the way he angled off that straight mm -hmm. strike, got out of the way, hit him, stepped to the left, reset his angle. Very high level stuff coming from Hamza Abdelhazayev. And he's constantly in his opponent's face here. He's constantly. He's not standing off them at all. He's constantly, when they move, he moves. And he has this wonderful ability to almost get his opponents to mirror him a little bit. Ooh, big step in uppercut coming there from uh, Nema Abdrashitov. Why well, I am impressed with both these fighters is just how loose they are, Kirik, in the striking realms. This is high, high level mixed martial arts. Another inside kick there coming from Anzor. One minute, 25 seconds left in this first round. A little eye poke there, recognized as well there. My Nemet didn't step in to make him pay on that. Just shakes it off, gives a thumbs up to his opponent. And again, it's not that it's intentional, it's just with these gloves being open-handed. You know, you hear ad nauseum when you watch an MMA show, it is one of the occupational hazards of being a mixed martial artist. So taking the center of the cage, light on his feet. Even just those little steps in and out, look at that athleticism. The, the way he moves is so fluid and the range he covers. He's put it on display already with shots just like that. And he's getting closer and closer with that oh. one too. The right hand clipped the temple there of Nemat. Nemat much more aggressive now with the takedown attempt. Forced to shoot in for the takedown, closing the distance well. Good head position from Nemet right underneath the chin of his opponent because where the head goes, the body tends to follow, gentlemen. And Kirik, when you see a fighter like that change the game plan, there was a little bit of desperation and frustration. He, he was slightly getting the, uh, Anzo was getting the better of Nemet, but Nemet now forcing the game into a different world. That's exactly what happened, but that is the definition of mixed martial arts. If you're not comfortable in one area, you take it somewhere else if you can, and it's the wrestling that allows you to dictate where it takes place. If the fighters, are, if your opponent is a better fighter, you push his hips up against the wall or take him down to the ground, at which point the hips are no longer behind the shots and they no longer are any great danger. Very nice balance shown there by Anzor to stop the takedown from Nemet, but Nemet did land a nice cheeky little pop elbow just before the break though. Absolutely, changed the fight. <laughs> all the sting off of it it's a very dangerous technique but it can it can lead to great rewards i think we're going to see more of it we're going to see more of world class distance management round two underway nemat abdrashitov in the red corner anzor abdul hozayev in the blue me brian lacy alongside phil campbell and kirik jenis calling the action here for you at brave 47 and it has been action packed gentlemen just that panning shot mm. coming back to the cage what a beautiful venue we are in and what beautiful violence we are witnessing nemet trying to pop up with that head kick there and like i say you can see how anzor is now he's almost getting nemet to 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 mirror him a little bit with that in and out style and if you can do that as a fighter you can almost then dictate the pace flow and rhythm of the fight certainly trying to Get him to play into his world. Oof, nice inside kick there from Nemet. Switching stances, that's a tell as well, Kirik. It is, I'd like to see Anzor throw an outside calf kick to cut down on his opponent's ability to move those feet. I think he's trying just a little bit too hard to land those hands. He's gotta put some money in the bank by throwing that shot right there. Beautiful technique. There we go, one in return from Anzor as well. That's sometimes a tell, Phil, isn't it? That that hurt, I want to give you one back. Yeah, but again, Anzor with beautiful hands. You can see a little bit of reddening up on both the legs of the fighters here. This truly is a world-class fight between these two. A catch weight of 68 for this, this bout, but 
I've got to say, featherweights need to be aware of both of these fighters. Oh, deep, heavy calf kick there coming. And then, like you said earlier, one in reply. The outside calf kick hurts worse than the inside, though. Again, just keeping it range. Nice boxing coming from Anza. Oh, nearly one from Nemat. Just clipped, glanced, and that's turned the wrestler into Anzo Abdul Hazayev. Good takedown. Can't see what sort of bite on the neck, but he's only in half guard here. Be very difficult to finish this. He's got. He does have a great squeeze on him with two wins coming by guillotine, but. Oh, can oh, we a ninja choke? Ninja, ninja choke. choke! Look oh, at this, and he's using the cage. Oh, that looks deep. He goes oh. in the mighty possession. Oh, Decky that. Larkin. That Watch is. the carefully escape. Huge yeah. moment. Wow. What staying power by Abrashito. Oh, and a big shot. Oh, he's right hand. hand. Wow. Oh, he's following him down. From Look the jaws. finish this. Oh, and he's done it. It's over. Wow. wow. From the jaws of defeat. Wow. Nemet Abrashito. All right, Brave Nation, another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 47 cage. This comes to an end at 2 minutes and 27 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO from Kyrgyzstan, Niman Eagle Abdrashikov!